Yeah, I think um, if I haven't succeeded in alienating everybody yet, I may as well go a couple, two more points on the current policies and current issues. Uh, one is a thing which irritates me a lot. I don't see, I don't see much opposition to it, either on the libertarian movement or free market economists. I'm not saying it's not there, just don't see it. It might be there bubbling underground and I haven't seen it yet. Anyway, we've had in the last few years a veritable reign of terror on Wall Street. Uh, many of us have our least favorite politician. It's very difficult. I think about uh, my least favorite politician. It's very difficult to decide among a rich tapestry of choices. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you focus on this guy, yeah, yeah, he's the least favorite. You focus on somebody else, yeah, he's the one. But my particular favorite is Rudolf Giuliani, the heroic Savonarola of Wall Street. Okay? The Hitler. The scourge, yes, the scourge of Wall Street. Uh, and uh, Giuliani is, uh, is, is, as you probably know, he'll probably be the mayor of New York soon. And his big thing is using the power of the state apparatus to, including all, all crazy illegal means, and certainly unlibertarian means, to, to, to what? To combat the evils on Wall Street. What are the evils on Wall Street? Well, things like uh, insider trading, which is kind of an absurd means. If you hear, if you talk over a martini, you say, gee, I know, gee, Jim, I know that so and so is XYZ Corporation is going to merge with ABC Corporation. You're arrested. It's illegal. Somebody's spying on you. It's, ah, it's inside trading evil. Lock them up. And, um, the, uh, the idea that somehow an unfair advantage, if you know something more than the other guy and therefore profit from it, that's what free enterprise is. It's, it's knowing something more than the other guy and being an entrepreneur and profiting from it, whether it's the stock market or, or business in general. So this is a direct assault on free, free markets, and free enterprise, and private property, and all the rest of it. Uh, it's a victimless crime, just as much as prostitution and drugs. It's a victimless crime. It also helps the economy by, by siphoning control and ownership of, of assets of corporations to the most efficient people, those who know more than the other, than the other clucks. Okay? And uh, for this, they are persecuted. The, 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 more, the invest, two invest, prominent investment bankers were dragged out of their office in manacles and chains by Giuliani's thugs. And what does the public say about it? I mean, usually I'm optimistic about the public, but not in this sort of situation. They, they don't understand it. They, they're good enough something taps their pocketbook, like, you know, like a pay raise or something like that. They don't understand that. Something on like Wall Street they're all for it. Yeah, yeah, these guys. If, and one of my least favorite news things on television is the man on the street interviews. I don't know whether it's the man, real man on the street or whether they select it that way. A bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of bozos from, from, from beginning to end. And when they, they arrested some of these uh, Wall Street insider traders, they asked these guys, what do you think? I think the Ivan Boski case. What do you think of the Boski punishment? It's too, too good for them. It was a billion dollar fine and then <laughs> five years in jail and, pro and prohibiting from ever treating a security again. Too good for them. They should throw the, lock them up and throw away the key. This seemed to be the modal argument, the modal opinion of the, the man on the street. Uh, and if you talk about the civil liberties or, or, or property rights of Wall Street people, it's, it seems, uh, for, uh, they're rich, they, they, who, who cares about their rights? I think it's extremely important for us to get into this. Uh, to me, the, one of the most interesting aspects of this <coughs> was uh, a, Wolf, a New York Times headline. New York Times always tries to be very objective in their headlines and their reporting. But this time they weren't very objective, even by New York Times standards. They were, they, and the big headline was something like this. I wish I could remember the exact quote. New York, and the financial page, yet, which is even more neutral than the other parts of it, was something like this. Uh, income so big that even Wall Street can't stomach. That was the headline. <laughs> and the income referred to Michael Milken, indicted for a billion dollars fine, 50, 550 years in jail, whatever the penalties are, for the evil, for the crime of inside trading, plus uh, takeover bids and all that, which I'll get into in a little bit. And uh, the comments about Milken's $550 million a year income, okay? Uh, three people in particular, the New York Times quoted as attacking this bitterly. It's too much, it's monstrous, so on. One was, of course, our old buddy, John accounts Galbraith. So you can expect that from Galbraith, all right? Galbraith was, was made millions by attacking everybody else's affluence. <laughs> this is contribution of social life. Uh, the other was with Donald J. Trump, with all the nerve saying, you can be happy on less money than that. <laughs> right, what, what goal, what chutzpah? <laughs> the third, none other than our old buddy who practically runs the country, David Rockefeller who says, it's, it's, this, if somebody can make that much money, it shows there's a serious imbalance in our financial system. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, are we, what are we looking at here? We're looking at a situation, I think basically what we're really looking at is the old corporate elite, which was inefficient, which, is, which uh, 
has been shafting in the stockholders for a long time, suddenly he finds a system whereby people like Milken can finance, take over bids, and, and get the corporation out from under inefficient elites and onto new and better uh, owners. And so to pay the stockholders more money. That's really what it's all about. Uh, people like Rockefeller are almost the embodiment of the old-fashioned corporate elite.